Yeah. Okay. Let me uh, let me introduce our first uh, panel here. So um, first we have uh, uh, Yasmeet and Matthias. Uh, Yasmeet is uh, the head of Ericsson Consumer Lab, the uh, Insights and uh, 5G Innovation Unit at Ericsson, based in Sweden. He heads a team of researchers and, and analysts responsible for driving 5G innovation with partners and tracking impact of key technologies like 5G, XR, A. AI, web, 3.0, and more consumer business. Uh, Matthias, a uh, good friend of mine, uh, is uh, the head of, <coughs> of global sales at Immersal, uh, part of Hexagon, and accelerating AR and metaverse transformation across the world. They do amazing work, and uh, I'd like to welcome them both to the stage now for their presentation. Give it up. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, you can. Yeah, so small correction. So I used to be head of sales, now the CEO of Immersal. And, uh, but yeah. Sorry, CEO. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm here to talk about city scale AR, XR, and why the ecosystem is so important, especially developers. And uh, our good partner, Ericsson, has been work working with us. Uh, past couple of years now, and they will then like share more practical examples how to run like successful ecosystem, and why also network is playing a key role on that. So, a couple of words about us. Uh, we have been established roughly seven years ago, and two years ago Hexagon acquired us. We had only four employees in that point. Now we have 19 or 20, yeah, 20 tomorrow, and then most likely 14 in, uh, 40 people in the in next 12 months. Hexagon is a Swedish corporation. We have more than 5,000 people in research and development. Our market cap is about 40 billion euros, or USD, and 24,000 employees as of now. And as a Nordic company, like Ericsson as well, sustainability is a big part of our life. So I will give you like short overview about the tech in the background. So there's kind of like three main building blocks. So you need spatial mapping, visual positioning, then you also need the interactive 3D content plus the network. And it includes 5G and edge computing. So the spatial mapping is is the part of the tech that you kind of like map any physical locus in the world, and then you generate 3D point cloud out of that. It's machine readable version of the real world, and then you can localize yourself by using visual positioning. This is the, the baseline, and then you have to also add interactive 3D content, and all of this is enabled by 5G. Here you can see example of the 3D point cloud. If you have ever been in Finland, you might recognize the place. It's a central railway station in Helsinki, and also the metro underground. So this is kind of like the backbone of the technology that you don't see. And on top of this, all the city scale interactive XR experience will be built. And these blocks are here, are city blocks from Helsinki. And we are also partnering with lots of innovative developers and XR companies. This example is from our partner Designium. They are from Japan. And we have also Hata, Hata sitting here from Designium. So the idea is that you have like one map in city scale, but several use cases. This one is for gaming, but it can be also like wayfinding, find your friends. It can be used for robots as well. In the future, we will have cars driving there and localizing by using VPS. And the next one is from Spain. So our partner has create this kind of like innovative way of adding AR content on top of real world in Valencia. For some reason, the audio isn't working. 
Thank you. So the idea is that you can have like ads in the right place in the right time, and it's, it's location-based experience. So one of the key takeaways is that there's already 15 billion devices. So you don't have to wait anymore that someday AR glasses will be mainstream. This includes all of the iOS, Android, and Huawei devices. In addition to this, there's maybe 150,000 AR glasses in the market as of now. Trying to kind of like paint the big picture. So going forward, you have all the cities covered by, by point clouds, and then you can start to build your own experiences in city scale. They can be like some experience around museums, something for the kids in the school, and one of my favorite is maybe this real estate showcase. Basically, you can go to a certain neighborhood, just take your phone out from your pocket, and then you can see around what kind of flats there is for sale and for rent. So why the ecosystem collaboration is key to scaling XR? Uh, we have been working a lot with telcos, and quite often they are lacking of talents. So they, they don't have certain talents in-house, so they need ecosystem around them. And that's the place where developers can help big enterprises. Also, these XR solutions are quite complex, so you need like specific tech stack, you have to have like specific software, specific hardware, and then you also have to network, have to have the network to enable it. Then also faster time to market, when you're working with a bunch of people from diff different companies, you can like uh, combine your knowledge and make the product faster and more affordable. And also the collaboration, raises the awareness of your product and idea. And that's also the reason why we have been working with Ericsson. So they have amazing 5G startup program, and they are working around the globe with different kind of innovative developers. And that's also the reason why I want to like invite SASMEET on the stage. There you go. Hey, thank you, Matthias. Uh, great to be here. Uh, first time at AWE and, and really excited to kind of present a view from uh, Ericsson uh, and, and what we do. I think uh, maybe Ericsson does not need a very deep introduction, but for those of you who are not aware, we are in the business of uh, you know, enabling communications infrastructure, both on the hardware side, on the software side. Over 140 years of rich history, uh, you know, standardizing, bringing communications technology right from 1G going up to 5G right now. Uh, and it's interesting that, that you know, we, we are now in a very interesting time with, with 5G uh, becoming one of the fastest technologies as far as adoption is concerned if you compare it with, with previous generations of technology. Uh, over 50% of the world's mobile traffic network outside of China is being carried by Ericsson today. And the group that I belong to is, is essentially a, a group of researchers and analysts who are trying to understand how uh, new technologies are shaping usage behaviors, and also you know, a lot of 5G innovation and research that's happening at Ericsson together with ecosystem players and partners. Uh, you know, my group is responsible for working with, with these partners. So we're extremely proud that we are powering 145 networks globally on 5G in 62 countries. So we work a lot with telco partners uh, very, very closely uh, in order to understand how these networks need to be built, but also how can value be derived from the infrastructure. And XR is a very important uh, sort of piece of puzzle in this entire game. So as far as research is concerned, I want to talk a little bit about our opinion of how we are seeing 5G is becoming an important enabler in pushing XR usage. Uh, and we do this by going out and doing a lot of research with end consumers and bringing back all that data to, to our customers and also publishing a lot of research uh, in the public domain. So one of the interesting things that we have seen now is that over the past two years, we have seen AR especially, you know, being pushed really hard by 5G. If you just compare uh, the usage patterns between a 5G user and a 4G user today, 5G users are much more engaged with immersive services, but also 
the new generation of, or the first generation of metaverse services, whether these are virtual worlds or transactions in virtual worlds, we see 5G users essentially uh, doubling up on time being spent in these uh, different uh, sort of sources of information and services. And that's really interesting, and that begs the question, is it the technology which is really pushing augmented reality usage, or is it something else? And we believe it's both. It's both the availability of high reliable networks offering great throughput uh, and a great experience to end users, but also the fact that we see our customers, the leading telcos, are now experimenting with various XR initiatives across the globe. Uh, and you see these XR in initiatives kind of span from XR in education, uh, going up to XR in, in city scale applications, shopping, retail, entertainment, uh, you name it, and we have the telcos kind of invested in this area, trying to experiment, trying to see how they can really help bring about 5G differentiation, how 5G can be leveraged, and to showcase to end users how we can deliver a great XR performance over these 5G networks. So we are involved with this, and this is the current sort of usage patterns. But what do we think about the future? What's going to happen really with, with mixed reality glasses? What are the type of use cases that we are likely going to see? So we went out and we did research with end consumers and we figured out that the first thing that's essentially going to move, the first use case that's going to move from smartphones to mixed reality glasses apparently are not going to be advanced AR applications, but basically video streaming moving from 2D to spatial viewing. Our projections tell us that we are now reaching a stage where we are reaching what we call peak video on smartphones. There is only so much time that you can spend streaming video on smartphones today. So we ask consumers, what's going to happen if these new form factors and new emerging devices are going to be there in the future? What we see is that consumers see video usage transforming into spatial viewing. And globally, we see that by 2025, almost two hours of more video content is going to be consumed. And bulk of that is going to be on mixed reality devices. Now, that's very obvious that consumers see use cases that they are familiar with being moving first to mixed reality glasses. And as the ones building infrastructure, we are very confident that we can deal with the extra traffic that is going to be generated because this traffic is essentially typically a mobile broadband traffic that we see over 4G or 5G networks. The issue is when XR moves beyond these basic use cases to more advanced use cases, uh, especially on, on a city scale level, that's where new network requirements are going to be set. So how do we look at these new network requirements? Well, what we have done at Ericsson is really start to map out different operating points for XR. And we call these different XR flavors. So looking at the timelines out here, you could see, of course, what we are living with right now is XR flavor one, which is basic XR, which is being done with devices that are existing today. A lot of the, the computing is happening locally on the device, but we see a future where computing is going to be offloaded onto the cloud. And of course, we will have lighter form factors and so forth. But what's interesting is that higher the computing offload, greater the network requirements or more stringent network requirements. And that's what we see happening with, with the networks and, and why new functionality and new demands are going to be set on the networks as such. And this is really important. You know, this is why we need to work with you guys, the developers out there, building these advanced XR applications to try and understand what are the unique requirements that exist today? What do you really need from the networks? And can we really expose those capabilities as APIs uh, being made available to you in an open fashion. So basically, can we open up 5G networks for developers to consume those network APIs? Now, let me give you a, a small example out here. We heard a lot about Google's geospatial creator, and that has created a lot of noise, and it's trying to democratize this creation of city-scale augmented reality sort of experiences. Imagine you had this project in Unity, right? And you set up your project, and you're trying to drop very high polygon data uh, on a downtown location out here. You have everything set up and so forth, and you eventually use Unity and Google Sp Spatial Creator APIs in order to do that. Well, what happens? Eventually, you figure out that the eventual experience was not so great 
because that particular location had unreliable 5G coverage. Also, what you figured out was that the experience of your XR application during busy hour was also not great because there was congestion on the network. Now today, nobody in the industry is talking about these aspects. We are just guessing as far as these conditions or variable conditions are concerned. But what if, if we told you that as developers, we want you to focus on more on the creative aspects rather than being thinking about how your application is going to really perform on the network. And this is where I believe network awareness is going to be very important and crucial for XR applications to scale. We believe high-performing networks are like the backbone for XR to scale. And more to that, network awareness and intelligence is going to be the key to unlock and monetize your XR applications. And this is what Ericsson is involved with. We want to bring that network awareness and intelligence into these XR applications. So, and this is how we are actually collaborating with the ecosystem. Well, what we're doing today is through a program called Ericsson Startup 5G, gathering and working with globally leading telcos, which are becoming a big distribution platform for these XR applications. So you see the telcos that we are working with today, but also that we have gathered over 60 global startups as part of this Ericsson Startup 5G program, working very closely with them in order to understand the network requirements, not just today, but also in the future. Uh, with this program, we are providing developers access to over 310 million consumers globally as an installed base of users who are able to try out and use XR applications and give feedback to us. So here you see uh, the partners that we are working with and some of the partners and startups essentially are going to be in this room today. A truly global program with startups ranging from in the valley, going up to Japan and South Korea, we're really proud of what we are achieving today with working with all these partners, but we want to grow this community. And we want to invite all of you to start looking at and, and exploring and discussing with Ericsson how these network requirements are really going to push uh, XR. What we are also seeing is that while working with these startups, we have to have a stringent criteria about who are we really bringing into the program. It's not so much about quantity of startups that we want to work with, but rather the quality of startups that we want to work with. So what we're really looking for is startups who have a consumer-led proposition that can take advantage of 5G or the characteristics of 5G, a proposition that is short-term, because of course the telcos are interested in 5G monetization, and a proposition that's scalable. We marry that with our understanding of how we think XR applications are going to scale, but also a lens of our customers uh, especially aspects like delivery com complexity. Is it extremely complex to deliver those XR applications? Does it need edge rendering? Does it need uh, special network characteristics and so forth? So we look at all those aspects in order to bring in startups into the program out here. Now, what we are also doing is offering startups, uh, of course, the capability, the technical know-how, and working with the experts but we are helping startups kind of grow their business outside of the regions that they're involved with. Again, giving them access to these 300 million odd consumers in different markets. We're working with them on marketing and exposure via events, and I will talk a little bit about that as well. Insights and know-how, and this is really interesting. What if I told you that you could do market research at global scale with Ericsson, mm -hmm. testing your concepts with the end consumers, without spending a single penny. Well, I think a lot of startups are gonna be interested in that, and that's what we bring as Ericsson Consumer Lab, is the ability to test concepts, to test prototypes with end consumers and bring back that knowledge both to Ericsson, but also to our startup partners. And of course, there are collaboration opportunities working with developers, like-minded developers in this program itself, who are maybe working with uh, you know, similar technologies and so forth. So we see that happening as well. So these are some of the successful cases that are coming out of the program. I'm not going to go a lot into detail, but of course, ranging from immersive sports experiences, we're not just looking at XR, we are also looking at other demanding applications as well, such as gaming, uh, virtual worlds, metaverse-related activities, education, of course, with our partners like AT&T and so forth. So there is a plethora of different uh, cases and opportunities that we can unlock 
for our startup partners uh, via, via our collaboration with, with our customers. Now, here is an example of uh, some visibility and exposure for Mobile World Congress, which is by far one of the biggest telecom events in the industry. We worked with some of the partners out here, uh, Quark XR, Condensed Reality, Immersal, uh, and iExperience, in order to create certain experiences that talk about the journey of, of XR. And, and I think the videos might not do justice, but what we had was the first multi-user, massive volumetric video streaming into augmented reality being offered both for smartphones, virtual reality headsets, but also Snapdragon Spaces glasses as well. And what we are trying to emphasize is that just having hardware or content is not enough. You need exposure to network capabilities to enable these demanding sort of applications. And that's the key part out here. And what we did at Barcelona is exactly to showcase how are we really going to open up these 5G networks to content developers and so forth. So as an example, what you see on the screen out here is uh, network APIs that were exposed via a startup uh, that we had on cloud gaming, which was Blacknut. And together with uh, this acquisition that we have done recently, uh, Ericsson acquired a company called Vonage, which was in the business of communication APIs. So selling APIs to over 1 million developers, and these APIs were largely SMS, video, uh, and communication-led APIs. But we are now transforming those APIs into network APIs, allowing for application providers to request for quality of service on demand. And this can, be, this can happen by a user-triggered way. So here in an example, a user can actually request for boosted performance from within a video conferencing application or a cloud gaming application, but also that the application can sense network degradation and request for these network APIs in order to improve quality of service experience. So we have tried this now with cloud gaming, and we have showcased that it actually works. And now we want to extend this to XR. So let me give you a, a quick video of how we are working with, with one, of the, uh, you know, one of the VR startups that's in the business of immersive video and how we're going to expose these network APIs. Ericsson and Vonage. Simplify network API exposure and developer API consumption. Drive innovation for communications platform as a service. Deliver new levels of performance across 5G and 4G networks. And help communication service providers monetize their 5G networks in new ways. So now, when you imagine the future, imagine possible. There's nothing like the excitement of live sports, but even at the stadium, you can still miss a moment. And you always want to see that amazing play again and again. Imagine watching high definition instant replays from multiple angles on your phone. All the excitement of being at the game, plus high definition replays at your fingertips. Ericsson and Vonage unleash 5G capabilities that enable experiences that demand unwavering network connectivity and time critical communication. Here's how an exclusive never miss a moment experience could work. Any fan inside the stadium with app access could watch the game from different angles and queue up full resolution replays on their phone. By using roaming status and location API, a fan's access to certain app features could be enabled when they're at the event. Geofencing assures that this exclusive quality of service experience is only available to in-person attendees. Ericsson and Vonage, in partnership with technology leaders like Telefonica, YBVR, Vodafone, and Orange, are developing industry-leading experiences like these that put sports fans at the center of the action and enhance their viewing experience. Ericsson and Vonage, working together to create a leading global network platform, unleashing 5G capabilities. Accelerating the world's ability to connect. Imagine possible. <clears throat> right. So you saw a little bit of a glimpse of what we are trying to accomplish out there with these network APIs. We're just starting off 
with basic use cases. But as I said, we want to extend this to this XR community. We want to understand what are those network requirements, what are those network APIs that are going to be crucial. And we want to work with you guys out here. So we want to help grow this community. If you have ideas, if you have demanding use cases and applications that can best take advantage of these network APIs, then yes, we are all ears because together we are better. Thank you so much. Right, hi everyone. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes with the uh, building of the uh, billion user metaverse. Uh, come see Matthias and yes, meet somewhere on the show floor. I'm sure they'd love to talk to you. Uh, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Thanks, guys.